Hello, redesigners, and happy Monday. It's Monday, yes it is, at noon EST. I'm Cece from CC Restyled. I am a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima, and today we're going to be um, going over some tips and tricks and how to fix transfer boo-boos, whether that be um, tearing or uh, maybe Maybe you have a patch that didn't adhere and you need to fix that. Just anything uh, or a few things that could go wrong with transfers, um, the application and um, how to apply them around keyholes or other moldings and things like that. And also um, just um, some general tips and tricks on using them. So even if you are a, a beginner, it would help to see this, you know, if you haven't done your first transfer yet, or if you've done tons of transfers and you, you know, just don't quite know how to deal with mistakes um, during application, that's what I'm gonna go over. So, um, hello everybody. If you are hopping on, make sure you say hi. Um, I appreciate you. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I have some practice boards here. We're not screwing up transfers on purpose on an actual piece of furniture, sorry. <laughs> but we do have some demo boards here and first I'm gonna start with um, let's see I'm gonna start by addressing let's go ahead and start with a couple of the most common things I'm not gonna say issues with transfers but like things that happen with transfers that um, are pretty common and easily fixed so um, first we're gonna talk about halos or ghosting and also overlaps so a lot of um, people oh yes so this is a good video for you if you have not yet done a transfer or you're waiting on your first ones to come this is a good one to watch for reference we're going to go over some common things that happen with transfers um whether that's a boo-boo in application or you know just some things that just happen with transfers that we can work around so um, we're going to start with Wondrous flora, okay? Not to be uh, not to be confused with wondrous floral. It's wondrous flora, and um, we're going to go over a few things with this transfer. So first, we're going to talk about overlaps. So a lot of transfers, okay, pretty much most ninety nine percent of transfers are designed so that you piece them together and they form an image. Um, you know, some of us use them. We cut them and chop them and place them as we please. But a lot of times, you know, you want to go for the image that is, you know, intended. So you have to piece them together. This one in particular comes in four pieces. It's this image and then this image. So we're going to work with this image right here. We're going to talk about overlaps. And we're also going to talk about ghosting or halos, which is the clear line that happens around transfers. And it's more apparent on some colors than other colors. So like on dark colors like black and navy. It's usually more apparent on darker colors. So um, we're gonna talk about that. And then we'll also talk about how to blend your transfer into the background a little bit better instead of just see how this, see how this transfer is just kind of a, it's a rectangle. It's got a solid hard edge of the green. Um, this one, not so much. It doesn't really have a hard edge. It's just kind of this pretty flower and butterfly and some text and you can just kind of plop it wherever you please and it fits into the background. Well, these with a hard edge that are squares or rectangles, they don't just naturally fade into the background. So a lot of times um, I see people apply their transfer to their piece and then they say, well, how can I blend this in? It looks like I just plopped it on there, which yes, it kind of does look like that. Unless that's your intended design, that's generally not what you want. So there is the bottom piece and we've got a top piece here. Okay, so here's our two pieces of transfer. Now first, we're gonna talk about overlaps. So overlaps happen um, on the transfer seams where you piece them together. They're kind of unavoidable and on some transfers they're more apparent than others. Um, and let's see, if I can show you real, I don't know how well you can see that. Do you see that little clear line around the edge? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. See the little clear edge there? That's where you overlap them, and sometimes on some 
transfers, it can create a line all the way across that is visible. And, um, you know, so, you know, some people don't care for that. Most of my designs are, are pretty busy, so it kind of it gets hidden in the design. However, not everyone has busy designs, and maybe you don't want that line. So one thing to do after you apply your transfer and over, overlap it, it only overlaps just a little tiny bit, about a sixteenth of an inch, and, and then you'll have that line. One thing that you can do is take a piece of sandpaper, you know, after you have that line. I've got a rad pad here because it's a little gentler, I believe, than sandpaper. Um, Find your sandpaper. I've got here fine, a fine grit, which these don't have number grits on them. So fine grit, I would I would equate this to maybe like a, I don't know, 120 maybe grit. Okay, and these can be rolled up, which is super awesome. So you can take that over your line and just lightly sand it to get rid of your line, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you how we cut that overlap off and butt it up next to the bottom half. So you can sand off your little overlap line or normally I would use a paper cutter to do this, but I left my paper cutter at home. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting the little clear edge off. I'm cutting it right up to the, uh, I'm flush with the print, okay? So I'm cutting flush to the print. Okay, so no more little clear edge. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this piece first. So your transfer, you wanna peel off the backing paper slowly, and you do wanna be careful up until the point where you're going to stick your transfer. You wanna make sure your transfer itself does not roll up and stick to the back of itself. That's another boo-boo I see happen often, and there's no fix in that one, sister. There's no fix in that one. You are up. Crap Creek if you let your transfer stick to the back of itself. So just be really careful and um, don't let that happen, okay? Let's see, see if you can see it. Is that a good? Okay, and from this angle, I can kind of see questions. So if I miss any, I'm sorry, um, but I'll do my best to try to answer any because I want you to be able to take away from this knowing some, you know, knowing some things, you know, on how to proceed if you have a boo-boo. So you wanna apply your transfer to a clean painted surface, okay? Dried paint, obviously. Normally I would line up my transfer all nice and pretty, but I'm just gonna eyeball it for this because um, this is just a demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my first piece, okay? I've got it where I want it. I'm gonna give it a good little rub all over, and then I'm gonna take my transfer tool or my wooden stick. All transfers come with this little wooden stick. And you use that to rub all over your transfer to get it to adhere, and that's fine. Or you can get a fancy schmancy transfer tool with a big end for larger uh, areas, you know, sized areas, and then the smaller end for, you know, more concentrated areas. And then on the end of the big end, there's this little hook. Can you see that little hook right there on the end? You can use that to go around bevels or inset areas or um, you know any kind of drawer edges or what have you to really get a nice um, tight rub on your transfer. So we're gonna go ahead and rub on this piece. Sorry, that's shaking the camera. I'll try to get it done and over with. Okay, so you're gonna rub all over your transfer really well with some firm pressure, okay? Some transfers require a little more muscle than others, so you're gonna be rubbing a little bit more firmly. Uh, it also depends on the kind of paint that you are um, applying to, but I'm, I'm thinking most of us, 75% of us are applying it to some sort of chalky style paint. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, um, let's see, I'm gonna go around my edges one time. You always wanna make sure your edges are nice and secured. Okay, so, 
go ahead and peel from one corner. We're gonna peel up from one corner and go slowly to make sure our transfer is adhered. In any places that it's not, we're just gonna give it a good rub again and make sure that it is. Peeling slowly, looks like it's adhering pretty well. Okay, and yes, this is, I don't know if you can see it from there, I'll hold it up in a minute, but you see the little clear edges around the um, transfer, the print area, the little clear edges, that's what we call halos or ghosting. And um, I picked this darker color for a couple reasons because usually the ghosting and halos is more apparent on the darker color. So we will work on getting rid of those or making them much less apparent anyways. And um, once we get our bottom half on. So let's go ahead and, I like to take my finger and rub around the edges to make sure the edges are all down or your palm, you can use your palm as well. Um, let's see, can you see? And then I rub all over to make sure I pop out any bubbles, smooth out any wrinkles. Uh, you know, you don't want any bubbles in your transfer because what can happen is when you seal it, the sealer can get underneath those little air pockets and um, it will dry and it will crack your transfer and, and it will start to peel and pull up and you don't want that. So just take the extra minute to make sure that you're free from air bubbles and wrinkles, okay? Go around the edges. You want to make sure that none of those are lifting. Okay, so... Now, we are trying to avoid the overlap, the dreaded overlap here in the middle. So I cut off the clear halo from this edge, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. You might be able to get away with just cutting off one of the halos on one side of your transfer, but I like to be safe, and if I'm gonna take the time to do it, I'm gonna cut off both of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and peel this backing paper up slowly. Don't let your transfer stick to the back of itself. Eek. Okay, so now we got to be really careful and we have to make sure that we're lining this up really, really well. Since we cut off our overlapping areas, we have to make sure that we have it flush to the top part of the transfer. Otherwise, you're gonna have a line of uh, see-through where you can see through to the paint. So what's the point in cutting off the overlaps and trying to avoid overlaps if you can see through to a line of paint? You know, it's just as unsightly. So, all right, I think I got it flush, okay? I will, uh, once I rub this on, I will bring the camera down so you can see it a little bit better and see um, how we avoided that um, outline, or I'm sorry, overlap, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and rub on this half of the transfer. Oops. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. This is just as, um, you know, much for you. Um, much of, this is for your information, okay? Less for me just um, showing you things. So um, Tiffany wants to know, can you apply these to ceramic paint? So you can. Um, usually ceramic paint is, well, when I think of ceramic paint, I think of enamel, but it's not always enamel. You can apply this to just about any kind of paint as long as it's thoroughly cured. So chalk paint, um, or, or dry, okay, thoroughly dried. I shouldn't, shouldn't say thoroughly cured. So chalk paint dries in a matter of hours and you can apply your transfer to chalk paint or chalk style paint then. Um, enamel paints, which are oil-based, take a little longer to dry. So you wanna wait a couple of days, about three to five days for anything oil-based to cure before you try to apply a transfer to oil-based. Um, but you can, you just wanna make sure it's dry. Okay, especially if it's oil-based because if the oil in an oil-based product is not cured, it will render your 
um, adhesive on your transfer useless because that's what oil does and um, it won't stick. So uh, what other kinds of paint? Metallic paints, transfers work great on metallic paints. You, most of them have kind of a sheen built in, um, you know, naturally of like a satin or semi-gloss and uh, transfers stick to semi-gloss and gloss finishes. In my experience, they, they stick really well. It's like the gloss just kind of grabs onto it. Um, what other kinds of paints? Acrylic, latex are all fine. Okay, so we're, rub we're peeling off our backing sheet slowly. Okay. There we go. We got it all adhered. So now we're going to rub it on with our palm or our fingertip and make sure we pop out any, pop any bubbles, smooth out any wrinkles and check out our overlap here. Well, it's not technically an overlap now. It's just a um, butt seam is what it's called when you butt the two pieces up next to each other. So there's no more, no more overlap line. I do have a tiny, tiny bit of a line here where I um, didn't cut it perfectly straight because I, I don't have my paper cutter, so I'd use scissors. I'm just gonna take my fine grit sandpaper and I'm gonna just sand over the top of that line just a little bit and it's taking it away, okay? Takes it away. But you wanna be gentle. You don't wanna completely, you know, sabotage your whole transfer, okay? So check it out. So instead of having that unsightly um, seam, can you even see where I um, butted them together? Not so much, huh? Not so much. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the halos or clear edge or ghosting, whatever you wanna call it that happens to all the transfers unless you cut it off and that's around the edge. So if you're sure that you've used your finger or your palm and you've got all those edges nice and adhered really well, Sometimes just simply getting them adhered will make them disappear at least somewhat. But on darker colors like this, they, they tend to really show. So we can take our fine grit sandpaper again. And here, let me try to, um, let me try to, to give you a little better close up here. Okay, so we're going to, um, I don't know, let me see any other questions real quick. Okay, so Tiffany, so should you top coat them first? Do you mean uh, the surface? Um, you, you don't want to necessarily top coat. You mean the ceramic paint? I don't think you need to top coat it first. You just make, need to make sure it's all the way dry. Um, so depending on if it's oil-based or water-based, that will be dependent on how long you need to let it dry. So if you let me know if you're using oil-based or water-based, like an enamel then I can help you out a little bit better. Um, any other questions at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, if it is the oil-based, you need to let it dry for three to five days. Same with stain, oil-based stains or paints, they need to be completely cured so they're, the oil is cured and not oily, because oily will Definitely screw up your transfer. Okay, you see those halos? Those little lines? We're just gonna kind of gently with our sandpaper rub at that. We don't want to take our paint off. We just want to take that little clear edge off, okay? So I'm just gonna do part of it for right now to show you, okay? So, see how it's, well, you can, probably can't see it at the moment because all you see is the sandpaper kind of dust. So. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my clear sealer, clear water-based sealer, and when I seal that, you should see that the line basically disappears as opposed to you know the haloing you can see that we left on there. So let me grab my sealer real quick. Most of the time, not every time, and not every color, but most of the time when you seal a transfer, that halo or ghosting will disappear. At least about 90% disappear, enough to where it's much more I you know, friendly on the old, the old eyes. Let me grab my sealer, I forgot it. Okay, so I'm gonna be using 
Dixie Belle clear coat in satin. You can use, um, it's about comparable to Minwax polycrylic. You can use clear wax. Um, most clear water-based sealers are just fine. Again, you want to avoid oil-based sealers. <clears throat> Oops. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply my clear coat in satin. Satin just happens to be my favorite. You can do gloss, flat, what have you. I'm gonna apply a little bit and you can see where my halo seems to just disappear. Here, I'll put some on the area that we didn't sand too so you can see the difference. How's that? Hopefully you can see it while it's wet, but or hopefully you can not see it while it's wet. Um, let's see. Okay, so, see. Let's see, where are we here? It's, it's a little wet, so it's shiny, but can you see where the halo, wait, where is it? Can you see it? Sorry, I'm trying to get a good angle here. See where the halo is right here? Wait, sorry, <laughs> I can't see the camera at the same time. And then, I don't know if you can tell on the camera or not, but it disappears right here where we sanded it off and then um, sealed it. So it'll, it'll be easier to see once it's dry. So we're gonna move on to, I don't wanna say issue number three, but situation number three, okay? I was talking about this earlier, if you're just hopping on, you know how some of these transfers are rectangular or square or whatever, they have hard edges. You know, like this one, for example, is the shape of a book cover. So um, not all transfers are like that. Most have fairly organic type edges, but this one in particular is a square. I've seen this transfer slapped on so many pieces of furniture just like this, and it doesn't fit the furniture. It doesn't blend into the background. It doesn't look right. It looks like it was just an afterthought and just plopped on there. If that's the look you're going for, if you're doing a book themed transfer or something like that, like that, that's fine. You know your vision, but for the most part, it just doesn't look right. So we're going to um, go ahead and distress the edges to try to, you know, fit into the background a little bit better. I'm using a medium grit rad pad. So obviously I've painted the, um, background of my demo board to somewhat match the colors in the transfer. Okay, this isn't always the case and you don't necessarily have to do that. You can still fade away into um, the, the background. So I'm gonna, since that's wet right there, I'm gonna move over to this side here and we're just going to, <coughs> excuse me, we're just gonna sand the edges to try to blend them into the background a little bit better. And I like to use red pads because I can manipulate them, fold them, roll them to fit what's comfortable. So we're just going to sand the edges. I would not suggest sanding with an electric sander to do this. I mean, you can, but you don't want to have to touch up all your paint and everything like that. So we're just going to sand the edges so that the hard lines disappear around the edge. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do enough to show you. Okay, so first we're going to sand it, get it to start to blend in. If you are not happy with how it's blending in from the sanding, we can always kind of uh, blend in the background paint color too. And I'll show you how to do that also. Again, you probably won't really, I'll need to probably seal it or do the blending in of the paint to really show you the full effect, but essentially we're just thinning out the edges of the transfer so that they will start to blend into our background better, okay? So you wanna sand the edges, okay? Sand them so that they're not harsh lines. See how that's not a harsh line anymore? No more, no more straight harsh edges. Okay, so if I seal that, you know, obviously 
you know, the color would, you know, when you sand it, it kind of gets a little whitish film on it, but I'm not going to seal it yet. I'm going to take my paint color and I'm going to use my paint color also to blend in the edges of the transfer. So there's, you can do one or both, you know, whichever suits your piece the best. Let me go ahead and grab my paint color real quick. Oh, where did it go? Hmm. Right. Almost out of that color. Okay, so I'm just going, I'm not going to like paint on the edges because then I'd be back in the same boat where I was to begin with. I would have a sharp edge. We don't want that. I'm going to kind of gently, almost like I'm dry brushing on the color, so I'm loading up my brush and scraping off the excess onto the side of my paint can, okay? And depending on your transfer, it may be um, multiple colors that you need to do this with. So, most of the time you can probably get away with just a single color. So see, I'm just kind of blotting the edges. I'm not painting it on, I'm more dabbing it on with just a little bit of paint on my brush similar to dry brushing, but I'm not brushing. Got little white specks in my brush, that's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more paint and dab, 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 dab that on. Okay, and you can take it in as much as you want it's probably best if you do a more organic edge. So instead of going straight down, maybe just kind of, you know, maybe a curved edge or like almost like a ripped type edge, okay? It's probably a little difficult to see since it's wet, but it will blend in once it's dry and look much, much better than that hard line, that harsh line on the edge of your transfer. Just do a little bit more over here. And I think you get the idea, right? Okay, you get the idea, right? There we go. Oh, let's see. Okay, so once that dries, it'll be nice and blended in that edge. And on this particular transfer, obviously you have <laughs> this hard line too. We're going to pretend like that's not there and that's just a flower or something, but you can see how, you know, it softens, softens up the edge. All right. So next we're going to, um, we're going to apply our transfer to this board here. You can see how it's got a strategically placed keyhole but I wanna put a transfer over my drawer, but it has a keyhole in it and it won't come off. What am I gonna do? Or I'm too lazy to take it off. What do I do? I'll show you how to apply your transfer around that keyhole. And then we might accidentally rip or tear a piece and have to patch that in. And then that's it. That's, that's what we got. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my board down, grab my transfer. So for this little demonstration i'm going to be using royal burgundy which is this pretty pink lush pink and burgundy flowers beautiful one of my favorites um okay so i'm gonna go ahead and open that up so i already showed you how to butt seam i showed you how to sand the edges to get rid of your harsh lines and now we're going to decide which piece of transfer we want to plop right down onto our keyhole. And then we're going to accidentally rip a piece of transfer. And there's a couple ways we can fix a, rip, a ripped transfer. So we'll do a couple ways and then call it a day. So let's just say, look how pretty this transfer is, you guys. Look how pretty these pinks and burgundies are. Aren't they beautiful? And the little lime greens. Oh. I love it. Where's a big hunk of chunk? There's a big hunk of chunk of. Look, there's a big hunk of chunk of flowers. We want to pop that right down onto our keyhole. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So 
Gosh, this is where my transfer is gonna fall. It's right over the top of the keyhole. What am I gonna do? Okay, so here's how I do it. There's numerous ways to do it. You can, um, you know, place your transfers strategically around the keyhole. But if say you are dead set on having this chunk of flowers around your keyhole, what do you do? So here's what I do. I don't know what everybody else does, but there's no right or wrong, I'm sure. This is just what I do. So before you re remove the backing paper from your transfer, okay, obviously you wanna sit there and make sure it fits your area. So where it's intended to go, you wanna make sure it fits, all that stuff. So now that I know where it's gonna go, I'm gonna feel around for my keyhole, okay? And I'm gonna take a sharp blade while you still have the backing paper on. You don't wanna take it off first. Okay, so on each side of my little keyhole, so the top, the bottom, okay, and then on the left and the right at the furthest most point where the edge of that keyhole is, that's where I'm gonna make my little cuts, okay? I make four little slits, top, bottom, right, left. Now, I'm gonna cut a cross, like, cut it like crosshairs, okay? So the left and the right slits, I'm going to connect the dots there, and then the top and the bottom slits, I'm gonna connect the dots there. Boom. Okay, so now our transfer should fit right around our keyhole, okay? And yes, there's lots of room for error here, so if we screw up, then even better. We're gonna have plenty of chances to see how to correct mistakes. So now that I've got my keyhole all nice and opened up here in the perfect size hole. I'm gonna take, you can take an X-Acto knife or you can use a pen or a Sharpie to draw right around the shape of that keyhole. I'm just gonna go straight for the uh, knife blade, but you can draw it first if you prefer. I'm gonna go straight for the knife blade and I'm gonna cut as close as I can around that keyhole. And you wanna make sure you're using a sharp blade and I'm very, um, and I wanna emphasize the sharp blade part because if you're not using a sharp blade, you're just gonna be dragging and tearing and cutting your paint and all that stuff that we don't want. Um, if you use a sharp blade, you can get a nice, clean, crisp, quick cut without ruining anything. Okay, so let's see. Go ahead and fit that around there. Okay, and then around our tops. Right, so there we go. So now we fit it right around our keyhole. So I'm going to remove that backing paper carefully. And then I'm going to carefully place it over my keyhole where it belongs. And boom. Now, um, now we would apply as normal, just careful going around your keyhole so that you don't, you know, scratch or ruin everything. But that is perfectly cut around our keyhole. And then we apply it. And we might accidentally um, rip a transfer or something. Oh gosh, look at that. What's happening here? Ah, ah we ripped our transfer. It's stuck to the back of itself. It's totally screwed now, right? Is it totally messed up right here? We made a big boo-boo. So our big chunk of flowers has this big missing chunk to it. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what we're gonna do. We might actually have two little, ah, area. oh no, what am I doing here? What am I doing? Now we have two areas that are screwed up. It's trash, right? It's trash? No, it's not trash, we're gonna fix it, okay? So the reason why we have two different areas where I screwed up is because I'm gonna show you two quick ways. It's called Royal Burgundy, Monica. This transfer is called Royal Burgundy. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you two different ways to fix 
these boo-boos, okay? So let's go ahead and finish putting this on right here so we can get the backing paper off of it because in either fix, we need to get rid of the backing paper. remove our backing paper here doesn't slowly make sure it transfers down it here nice and good it's a couple of spots where it's not You still want to make sure it's adhered properly. It's down really well. No bubbles, no wrinkles, even if you made a mistake, because we're going to fix it. You don't want more mistakes. Okay, so here's our two little mistake areas that we're going to be focusing on. So let's see. Can you see? Can you see it now? Okay, so let's go ahead and start with this area. Okay, so there's a couple things you can do. A, um, Assuming this is not your very first transfer, you may have scraps from other transfers. So scraps are basically any piece, no matter how small, that is usable. So if you know you go through a transfer and you have a couple little flowers left or a couple leaves left, I always keep those for times like this when I need to patch in um, some pieces of transfer. So the easiest solution would be to just go cut a big old flower out and plop it right on that, right? That's That would totally work. It would disguise our boo-boo. No one will ever be the wiser, and that's fine. You can cut up out a big old flower, assuming you have one, and just plop it on there. Not everybody has that, um, but you will, if you have one transfer bit, bit, you're probably gonna have the rest of the transfer. So there's other areas on the transfer where you can take and you know kind of pick and choose what you need, and um, just strategically take from other spots. So this is actually um, one of the edges of the transfer with the smaller little bundle of flowers. So I'm gonna try to find pieces of flowers that have similar coloration as this burgundy piece and this pink uh, piece of this rose. So I see right here that these petals here kind of have the same coloration and a little bit of the same shape. So I feel like if I cut these two petals out and put them together, they're gonna create a petal here that will fit. So we're gonna try that out and see if I'm right. We're gonna see if I'm right. And I usually am, so I'm just saying. Boom, boom. Okay, but what if I still need to use that piece of the transfer, you say, well, that's fine. You can still use this piece of the transfer. We're just gonna finagle it a little bit and we're gonna cut the edge to a little bit more organic of a shape like this, okay? Okay, so I'm cutting the edge of this transfer. Let's see, this zinnia I think is called, these little green guys. He needs to be a little more rounded. So we're gonna round him out. And boom, so you have a nice organic edge. You can still use this piece of the transfer. See, nothing is getting too visibly cut off. Everything's got a nice organic edge. You can still use it. And we have our patches. So these two pieces with the same coloration as this little missing chunk here, we're gonna try to patch those in just like this the best we can. Actually, I'm gonna cut off this little hunk of green here. Little hunk of hunk of green. Let's see, so we're gonna go ahead and let's place this. Oh, how do we wanna do this one? Let's do it just like this, okay? And then we're gonna apply that and you wanna be careful not to scratch your existing transfer. One of my friend Trisha said she likes to take a piece of that she's already pulled off and go over it, boom. Now you can rub on your transfer without worrying about scratching off the, what's already applied. See, genius set, Trisha. All right, so now we're gonna peel off our little backing paper here. 
maybe. Okay, so now we need our other little piece of transfer on this side. We're gonna just plop that right on in there. Okay, and no, it's not matching up. It's not the perfect shape or size. It's because we still have to patch in that little pink area right there. So we're gonna grab some pink petals and do that. So we're gonna find another part of our transfer and we're going to, let's see, patch in some pink. So there's a little chunk of pink there off that little guy that we took. So let's see, will that fit? That might fit. We're still gonna need some more. But we'll go ahead and cut this little chunk out and we will utilize him. And we need to find another little sliver of hot pink transfer somewhere. Where can we spare a little sliver of hot pink? Ooh, look, check it out. There's a little bit of hot pink there in that corner. We could probably stand to lose that. And there's a little bit of hot pink there, right there. We could definitely stand to use, lose that. So let's go ahead and cut out this hunk of chunk of hot pink and we'll see how good we are or how bad we are. Worst case scenario, like I said, just cut out a flower and plop it on there and call it a day. But we're gonna be a little more strategic. So my sharp edge, boom, that hard edge, I'm just gonna kind of cut it to where it's a little more curvaceous. Curvy, curvy. Okay, so we're gonna plop that right in there. And then this guy, we're gonna cut it a little more curvy too. And we can probably plop that right in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply those. Get this right there. Boom. And then we'll plop this little patch. Oh, let's do that right in here. Okay. Okay, so it looks like we need one more little pink petal to kind of fill in here. We can grab that from another little section. Let's see, let's find another little section with some pink. Trying to be, um, what's the word, resourceful. So I'm not taking a big old flower and plopping it on there. I'm trying to be somewhat resourceful, not waste a whole big old chunk of flower. There's some pink. There's some pink petals. Those are not the same flower though. How about from this little petal here, this little pink rose here. Oh, even better, maybe this guy. And let's just cut out this pink flower. We'll cut out his petals and use his petals. Okay. So let's see. Let's get our shape that we need here. We need this kind of C shape here. It's almost like putting together a puzzle, you know what I mean? Like you gotta find the little shapes to kind of flow together or fit together and go with those, you know what I mean? Okay, so we're gonna just put that right on in there. And boom, that is, so yes, I have these two little patches to go, but we fixed this little hole. So boom, so I wanted to show you that. That's how you patch in the little scrap pieces of transfer from just scraps that you may have. And like I said, yes, you can take a whole flower and just plop it on there, but maybe you don't wanna waste a whole flower. Maybe you don't have a whole flower to waste. Then you just take little bits and pieces. So next little fix is gonna be right here, okay? For that, we're going to pretend like 
So let's pretend like we were applying our transfer like normal, okay? And then um, we went to go peel off our backing paper and there was a piece of transfer that was stuck to the backing paper and it would not come off the backing paper. It was stuck. There was no adhesive on it. And you rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and it stuck on the backing paper, not on your piece. So that's our little hole. This has only happened to me literally less than a handful of times and it's usually much smaller bits. It's like pea-sized areas, so no big deal. But, you know, everyone's different. So maybe your patch was that big. We're gonna take a little bit of paint and we're just gonna kind of dab it on there to where it starts to blend in and no one will know the difference. So say you don't have any, you're not an artist, you don't like to hand paint flowers and you don't know how to hand paint flowers, that's okay. You don't have to know how to hand paint flowers and you're using your entire transfer so you don't have any pieces to spare just grab your paint you can use acrylic uh you know your chalk paint whatever and let's see maybe we need a little bit of a light color so we look at the colors in the transfer okay we've got the hot pink wait can you see it we've got hot pink with some white highlights on it and then we've got this burgundy with a little bit of hot pink on it so we're gonna go ahead and start with the lighter color and lay that down i'm just using art brushes okay so i matched up the closest pink color i have to um this transfer which is this color yes you can mix your colors custom i'm just trying to show you a quick easy fix that's not as intricate as mixing your custom colors and things like that Okay, so I'm dabbing on my paint color that's as close as I can get to my flower. And you can use a brush or your finger and just kind of soften up those edges. Okay, so it doesn't look like you literally just painted a big blob onto your transfer. Okay, and then we're gonna grab a little bit of the lighter color. See how this transfer has the white edges? It's got some um, highlighting. We're gonna roll with that and we're just gonna kind of dab on some white edges like a highlight just like our transfer has okay just kind of outlining it just a little bit nothing too crazy yes i know it's not the finest of the art that you will ever see but it works and i guarantee you no one will ever know the difference i mean you guys will know the difference because obviously you're sitting here watching me do this but bet you no one will know can you see Shoot, let me move this. Can you see where I'm going with that? So we're filling in, we're filling in, we're filling in. Now we're gonna dab on our burgundy color. Okay, so our burgundy color kind of starts here and we're just dabbing. And then on our burgundy flower, if you look at it, you can see how there's little bits of the hot pink in the burgundy. So we're just gonna take a little bit of our hot pink and dab it on our burgundy. And what that does is it kind of um, marries the two flower colors together and it makes it look a little bit more like it belongs there. Our little, uh, our little boo-boo is now gone. He's all gone, bye. Bye, Felicia. Bye, boo-boo, Felicia. You're gone. And there we go. So I'll hold it up so you can see it a little bit better. But how easy was that? Took like, what, two minutes to, <clears throat> that was even faster than patching in pieces of transfer, wasn't it? All right. So, let's move you up. Can you see? Can you see now where I um, dabbed on my paint, my paint dabs to fix our boo-boo? Can you even see it? Where is it? I can't even, oh, yeah right there and that took me two minutes you could spend maybe five minutes and get it spot on okay so look you can't even tell can you it's magic so if you have any questions drop them in the comments if I miss them then I will um, go back through and answer them I'm sorry um, I try to catch them but sometimes I don't so there's some different ways to fix your boo-boo transfers okay 
So I will see you all next Monday right here in the Redesign with Prima group and we'll do some other fun things. Some fun things Prima right here at noon EST in this group and I will see you later. I hope you all have an amazing week and happy Monday. Bye.